In this video, I want to walk you through the steps that I use to create a clearing light box in the example portfolio site that we've been working on. So let's start by looking at the finished product and seeing how your clearing light box is going to look when you're all done. So you can see here I've got three thumbnail images and they're sitting next to my photography blurb here where I talk a little bit about my thoughts on Instagram. So if you go down to the small view, see right here at the small breakpoint, I've got some basic foundation grid settings that allow this paragraph to sit on its own row on small screens and put the thumbnails below. But then on medium screens and larger, I've set it so that the photography blurb and the thumbnails sit side by side. So once we click each of these thumbnails, you'll see that it launches this light box effect where we've got a gray background and some back and next arrows to navigate between the images. Now you can also see here, there's a caption. Oh, let me just make this a little smaller. You can see there's a caption down below. Uh, I'll show you how to add that in just a little bit. But we can use the arrows to navigate through these different images and you can do this for as many images as you want and the large images can be different dimensions. Although in general I'd recommend that you keep them relatively similar in size. Now here you can also see Foundation gave me this handy class that when I roll over each thumbnail I get a nice little blue glow and it also puts a, a gray border around the thumbnails automatically for me. So this light box is really nice. It right out of the box has some great things that'll uh, make you look like you spent lots of time creating this beautiful custom light box but Foundation is doing lots of the heavy lifting for you. So let's take a look at how I set all this up. So first, I'm going to navigate to my foundation video clearing folder, and I'm going to open up the photography.html page in TextMate, or your preferred text editor. And then if we scroll through here, you're going to see some familiar things. So we've got the top bar here that's handling all our navigation. We already covered that. And then if you scroll down a little further, you're going to see the main tag where I've got everything that's not my navigation or my footer. And you'll see here I created a new row and then I made a new div with a class of small-12 columns. And then in that I put the photography header, that photography H2. Now you'll notice if you look at my layout here, you can see that the photography H2 runs all along its own line. So no matter what the size of the layout, photography sits on its own row. And that's how I wanted it to be. I didn't want uh, the photos to sit too high up on the page. So here, when you look at my code, you can see that the div closes for these uh, 12 columns here, and then the div closes for the row. So I made a row just for the photography header. Then I started a new row. And here I got a little trickier. So I said small 12, but medium dash five columns. Now, what is that going to do? Well, inside this one, I put my paragraph and this just has the little blurb that shows right here. And then I closed out the div for this set of columns, but I did not close out the row. Now here I started a new div and you can see that it's got an unordered list with some images in it and then I closed out that div and here I closed out my row. All right. So what I'm doing here is telling uh, foundation or telling the browser with these foundation classes that I want my paragraph here, my blurb, to be a full full width, full 12 columns on the foundation grid when we're on a small screen, but on medium screens it should only run 5 out of the 12 available columns. So it should be 5 twelfths or a little less than half of the available width. And then here for the div that contains all of my uh, clearing image thumbnails, I said hey you should be medium 7 columns. So on medium screens and larger you should take up 7 twelfths or a little more than half of the total foundation grid space. And then inside of there, this is where I did all the work in setting up those image thumbnails. So just to show how this looks again, small screens, medium. Okay. And as I get larger, these images, they just bump down because they, the way the list will naturally kind of fill up the available space. So then all the way to large, you can see we've got the thumbnails 
sitting next to the paragraph. This space has got 5 twelfths of the total grid, and these three thumbnails are getting 7 twelfths of that total grid space. So let's take a look at the code and see how I actually got these images in place. So the first thing you're going to need to do to start setting up your thumbnails is create an unordered list and you're going to have to give it a class called clearing-thumbs. Now this is really important. You're also going to need an attribute called data-clearing just before the pointy bracket that finishes out your opening unordered list tag. So make sure that you have clearing-thumbs and then data-clearing. And then you're going to create just a series of list items, just like you would if you were making a bulleted list. But inside each of those list items, instead of text, you're going to have a series of images. Now you can see here, I already linked each of my images to a specific large image file that lives in the image folder. Let's take a look for a second at what that actually looks like. So how did I set this up in my folder? Oh, sorry, that was hidden away there. So, you can see in my foundation video clearing folder, I've got an image folder, and in there I have small versions of each of my images, which I already resized in Photoshop so that they're all consistent dimensions. In this case, they're all 150 by 150 pixels. So I've got uh, other things in here, like my Loop Sunset thumbnail and my Montreal thumbnail. Now, it's a good practice to just put dash th at the end of your thumbnails. It's something that the foundation examples use, and it's a good habit to get into. And then the full-size images can just be called the same thing without the dash th. So you can see here that my photo of Alfie, my Chihuahua, is 400 by 400 pixels. Okay. But if we look at Loop Sunset, it's 800 by 800. So not all of these large images have to be the same size, but your image folder is going to look just like mine when you put your own custom images in here. Now I'd recommend that you put some images in here that you've taken yourself, but if you're not really a photography whiz or you don't have anything that you'd like to show off, you could go to one of my favorite sites for free images. It's at freeimages.com. Now you can sign up for a free account here and then when you search you can download anything that you like. So if you just do a quick search for uh, businesswoman and look that up, you'll notice that there are some uh, iStock photo sponsored results here. Just ignore those because those aren't free. And then when you find someone who looks very authoritative and in control, you find your stock photo. And if you're logged in and you click this, you'll be able to download a really big version. And then all the licensing information is over here. And typically the usage will allow you to use this for free, even in commercial works. But just make sure that you read more information about the usage options uh, and check to see if the if the person who uploaded this photo has any special notes like in this case the user Gronvik has said please notify me before using it in a public work all right so getting back to my images I just pulled these from my Instagram account and we've already gone over how I got them here in the IMG or image folder in my foundation files now let's go back to our code and just talk about a couple more things you're going to need to set this up. So here I've got my links and each link path is going to go in the image folder and then it's going to go to the big version of the image file, right? Because when we click the thumbnails, that's what we want to appear, the big version. Then I've got my class of TH. Now this TH class exists in foundation. I didn't create it myself and it's really nice because it puts this little gray border here and when you roll over each image, it creates this little blue glow. Now you could always override some of these settings like the color of the glow or the size of the border or something by customizing the th class in your own style.css file. Now inside of my link tag here I have an image tag. And it's very important when you create captions for each image that you use this attribute called data-caption. Now this is something that's just specially made by the Zurb Foundation folks so that you can add captions easily that'll appear in your light box. So just a reminder to see what that looks like when I'm looking here at my photo of Alfie, the caption shows up here and that is pulling from what's in the quote marks here in my code. Now after the data caption info, I've got source equals, and then this is where I have the image source for my thumbnail.
Then I close out the link and close out the list item. Then I just repeat that process for as many images as I want to display here in my grid of thumbnails. All right. So then I finish this out with the same treatment for my Montreal photo. I've got the image path going to the big photo for my link. And then I've got the image source going to the small thumbnail version. And here I've also got an image caption. All right. Now one last thing, if you're an advanced student and you're creating a file from scratch, make sure that you include this JavaScript initialization code down here. Now this has some references to jQuery and also to Foundation's JavaScript file and then an initializing function down here. If you don't have this just before the closing body tag, the JavaScript features of your Lightbox are not going to work. But if you've been using the example files all along, this should already be down just below your closing body tag as long as you haven't deleted it by mistake. So that should be all you need to know to get started and try making a light box of your own. Next we'll look at how to make a video that dynamically resizes using Foundation's Flex Video class.